Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave, and in this video we're going to cover the launch panel, which we have here, and follow actions. So you might see that we've got a different sample panel here, and that is because we're now looking at audio clips. We will cover the audio clips in detail in the next video, but for now we're going to focus on the launch panel, which is universal across both MIDI clips and audio clips as well. So what the launch panel allows us to do is it allows us to launch clips and multiple clips. So we could do it for just one or we could do it for multiple. And we can do this automatically using these launch features here. So we've already covered the launch modes in an earlier video. So we've got trigger, which just means when we hit play, it's gonna play the clip. We've got gate, which means we need to hold it down. So to demonstrate, as soon as I take my finger off, it's gonna stop in time with the global quantization. We then have toggle, which is gonna to be on, and I have to press it again to turn it off, and it will turn off on the next cycle. And then we have repeat, which is gonna repeat depending on the quantization setting I set here. So we'll stick that back to trigger for now. Uh, we then have legato, and what legato lets us do is legato is going to carry on the loop point no matter where we are in any of these loops. So it's not going to jump back to the start marker. So if you've ever used anything like Native Instruments Tractor, you can think of this as flux mode. And if you've used uh, Pioneer, you can think of it as slip mode. So just to demonstrate that, I've turned that on. We'll select these. I'm going to turn it on for all of them. Notice there how if we've got clips that have got differing settings, we're either going to get a asterisk like what we've got here, or we're going to get this half colored in bar. So we can just color all of them. We can set this back to global. And what this now means is that as I jump through these, if I press play, and then I play another one, it's now going to go to wherever it was in the scrub area or the playhead for each track. But because we've got the global quantization set to one bar, we're not actually going to notice that. So I'm going to turn it off and we'll do that for these ones as well. Turn these off or like I said, we can do it all in one go. So now there's no quantization. And if I play these, see how it's jumping instantly, but it's keeping the playhead position. And if I was to do this with Legato off, it's always going to fire from the start. So that's what Legato does. So we'll put that back on. We then got the velocity here. And this is for if we're triggering notes using a, uh, a, a MIDI device and we're actually firing off clips. Um, and what this allows us to do is, depending on how hard we hit a key on our MIDI keyboard to launch these clips, then if we have it at full velocity, then if we hit the note really quietly on our keyboard, then the notes are going to be quiet in this clip. And if we hear it really hard, the notes are going to be really hard in this clip. If we set this to zero, then it's not going to respond to MIDI velocity. Then we come on to follow actions, and these are absolutely amazing. What these do is they allow us to chain these clips together and let the clips interact with one another. And the caveat to this is that the clips must be in a row. So because we've got a gap here, then this is where the chain would be broken. So just to show you, we've selected all our clips. And what you get is you get to choose how often you want the follow action to happen. So we're going to set this at one bar. And then we get to choose the chance. And we get two options here. We get this one and we get this one. So this is the uh, action one and action two, and this is chance one and chance two. So we're going to leave these two blank for now. We'll just leave those alone. We're only going to work with this side for now. So we're going to say every one bar, I want you to play any other clip. And the chances of that happening are one. So that means it's definitely going to happen. So now if I press any of these. we can see that it's jumping between these three clips. And if we selected all five of these clips here, 
and we'll do that again. So we'll say any, we'll set the uh, quantization to 16th, legato to on, and the chances of this happening is one and it's set to one bar. So now if I press play, you'd expect these two clips to be included as well, but they won't because of this break. However, if I pick these up and move them there, then they now become part of that chain. So you might be thinking, how is this actually useful? Well, let's actually use it for something where it's actually got a bit more of a purpose. So I'm going to take legato off. We'll leave trigger on. We're going to set the quantization to go for eight bars. And we're going to choose. In fact, no, we'll set the global quantization to global. We're going to choose the follow actions to be eight bars. So every eight bars, I want the next follow action to happen. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose it to go to the next clip in the list. So here, just to show you, we've got no action, stop the clip, play again, previous, next, first in the chain, last in the chain, any or any other, which just means it's going to choose any other clip apart from the one that's already playing. So we'll go with any, and we've set the chances to one. And if we now hit play, this is just going to constantly cycle through these different ideas every eight bars. So we'll leave it to do that. And then we'll move on to these break beats, or maybe we'll go to these tops. Yeah, we'll go to these tops. So what we can do with these is we want to make this a little bit more interesting. We could actually blend all of these clips together. So to do that, we need legato turned on. And then what we can do is we can choose our quantization. And we're going to choose 16th. And this just means that when I fire a clip, I want it to quantize to the 16th note. It's literally just our global quantization, but for a clip basis. And then what we can do is we want these follow actions to fire off every 16th. And we'll set this to any. And this time we're actually going to incorporate the other as well. So we're going to say every 10 times I want you to play any clip. And then every... Two times out of 10, I want you to play the last clip. And if we now play this, you can see how we've got legato on, so it's just making its way through the clip smoothly, playing different chunks of each clip. And what I'm going to do is take that off for this because I don't think it's quite as obvious as I'd like it to be. So to take it off, you just say no action, no action. Set everything back to default. So this would be a chance of one and a chance of zero. Okay, so that's set back to normal. And we'll do this with our break beat. Uh, so we'll do this with our back beat because it's going to be a bit more obvious. So we'll set that back to how it was. Global quantization to 16. Any. Last. And we'll set this to 2 and we'll set this to 10. Now if I hit play on this, hopefully you'll be able to hear this a little bit better. And you can see at the moment, it's only firing the first clip. So I forgot to turn Legato on there. So let's turn that on. And we can see it's now firing different clips. It sounds all right, but I reckon that will sound more interesting. Instead of changing it every one sixteenth will change it every three sixteenths and just listen to how this sounds now. And let's listen in context with the whole beat. And the final thing I'm going to demonstrate, we'll just set this to Every four bars, we'll leave those settings as they are. Is I want to show you we have our one shots over here, and you might remember these from earlier where we were showing you the uh, launch modes. So if we select these, 
and we'll set them to repeat. And we see at the moment it's not letting us repeat these because we haven't set our quantization. So we select them all, choose the quantization, we're going to set that to sixteenths. So now we have our repeat. So let's select all of these and we're going to set this to one sixteenth. We're going to set the follow action to any. We're going to set this to one. It's always going to play something different. It's completely random. And now, let's give it a bit of reverb. And let's listen to that in context. So I can hear this one's a little bit too loud. We'll just turn this down slightly. And it's sounding okay, but we could definitely improve on this. So ways we could improve this, if we select the, all of these, we might actually want some of these to repeat. So what I'll do is I'll just select maybe this one. This one and this one. So I've selected three of them. I'm going to give them different follow actions. I'm going to say, play again. And I'm going to set that to two. So every time those ones play, there's twice the chance that they're going to repeat instead of play the next one. So let's listen to that now and we should hear a lot more repeats. And it's good, but we're not really getting a break from this. So what we can do is we can create another clip and all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the volume on that and then we'll do the same at the bottom. It doesn't matter where these are because they're going to play randomly anyway. So now we've got a clip which is just going to play nothing for a 16th and it might even potentially repeat as well. So let's listen to that. So it's good but it's a bit too much. And we can fiddle with these settings. Until we get something that works. Now if we wanted to make this a bit more interesting, we could just duplicate it, change all of these to something else. So we'll go for four. But now we'll go for ten, and the chances of playing again will set to one. So every ten times, there's a a chance that it's going to play again. And we'll fire these off as well, but we're going to pan these left, pan these right. Turn them both down slightly because we've got two of them now. And if we go to the track delay, we're just going to nudge one off slightly to give it a bit more of a stereo feel. And then we can also just add some follow actions to any clips that we haven't already done so. So we'll say every four bars, any other. And now we'll just launch the, all of these. So in this video, we covered launch modes, the clip quantization and follow actions and we've given you a few different ways that you can use these to enhance your creativity and workflow when you're working in session view. So that's all for this video and I will see you in the next one.